family, what's going on everybody? I'm so excited and elated that you've joined me for another week of the Teacher Success Series of Caps and Gowns TV. And you know how we get down. We're providing inspiration and motivation in preparation for your next graduation. Because whether or not you know it, you're on your way to a new level in life. Even as a teacher, you're about to get another degree. That's right. We're developing you, but most importantly, we are giving you tools so that you can go ahead and readily implement in your classroom right now, even during COVID-19. So today, we're continuing on with this series of classroom management. And I so hope that this has been beneficial to you and your school's community. In fact, if it has, let me know in the comments go ahead and sound off there but before we get into it i need to let you know that we've got content under our belt y'all not just for you but for your students too so if you're looking for some additional student development definitely check out the student success series or if you're looking for more content for yourself to develop as a teacher i am an educational consultant and we've got weeks of content under our belt here's one of my favorite tips as it pertains to classroom management i need you to establish a routine and again I don't want you to feel bamboozled this is something you may have heard before but I want you to do it a little bit differently and I also want to provide some understanding as to the reason why this is going to enhance your classroom management okay number one if you have not already done so I need you to strategically write down your routine what are you doing every single day the students need to know what to expect. From a social emotional standpoint, when the student is thrown off, typically it's because they don't know what's about to happen next. Just like how the entire world was in disarray when Corona hit, because we did not know what to expect. We had never experienced something like this in most of our lifetimes. And it's the same way in your classroom every single day. In my experiences, and in the experiences of the people around me who are working diligently in education, they thrive when their students know what to expect on a daily basis. I mean, from A to Z. I need to know what I'm doing when I come in my virtual classroom. I need to know what you expect from me. I need to know how much homework I have. I need to know every single thing down to the T. Now, this is going to require a lot of work from you on the front end, but I promise you it's going to pay dividends. It's literally an investment for the well-being of your classroom, and you need to do it, all right? Physically write it down. If you need help, I definitely want to aid you in that hit me up and we can work together or if you feel more comfortable utilize the team that you're on or cohort of teachers that you may know utilize some tips and tricks that they may have as it pertains to organization you cannot go into your virtual classroom winging it you can't do it i know you may get a little bit behind in your planning but i'm telling you i need you to buckle down sacrifice a weekend okay sacrifice that time that you may have just for one or two weekends so that you can get back on track because that's not only going to decrease the stress level of the students that you're serving, but it's also going to decrease your stress level because you won't have to manage so many behaviors in your classroom. All right. So tip number one for today, one of my favorites, establish your routine and stick to it. Stick to that thing. I'm talking about like your life depends on it because I promise you it does. All right, y'all, you got me again. I'm guilty. I told you that I got a hard time deciding which is my favorite. And here's the case as well. Tip number two is this. You need to have highly engaging and highly relevant innovative teaching strategies, okay? And what I mean by that is simply what you see right now. The reason why I wear the cap and gown is because I want everybody that listens to my voice, student, teacher, or parent, to understand that what my message is pertaining to is you getting you to the next level, getting you to receive that next degree that you're about to obtain, like you're on your way. Whether or not you're in school, you're enrolled in the school of life, and you've gotta always learn in order to get to the next level. This is my highly engaging and highly relevant teaching strategy to you. Now, something that you can implement in your class, here's an example. If you are teaching Romeo and Juliet, you can come to your virtual session with a robe on, depicting that Shakespearean time that is in the story of Romeo and Juliet. Dep Depicting that medieval time that you may be teaching about in history class. I don't know what it may be. You're going to have to spend some time in the lab thinking about it. But I promise you, you absolutely need this. Highly engaging and highly relevant innovative teaching strategies. And here's the reason why. You know, my favorite book says this. And all that get and get understanding. So I don't want you to leave feeling like I'm being ambiguous. The reason why you need this is because any student who is focused and locked into what they're learning is going to be less susceptible to be a disruption in your classroom. In fact, I want you to think about it like this. 
How would you respond if somebody disrupted you when you were focused on something? You would probably be a little bit irritated. And it's the same way for them. In fact, if you have these highly relevant and highly engaging innovative teaching strategies, I promise you, your classroom will begin to police themselves. And now this goes back to last week. You've got to find out what they may be interested in so that you can speak the same language. Now, I'm not telling you to be their friend. Don't get it twisted. I'm not telling you to be like them, but I'm telling you that you need to be able to relate to them so that your content and that what you're teaching is relevant so that they will be in engaged. And when they're engaged, they're less likely to be a distraction. If and you have these tools implemented, they will begin to manage themselves and each other. You won't have to call anybody out. You won't have to send any emails home because they are going to begin to self-manage. I promise you it's going to work like gold. So, so listen, I'm encouraging you get in the lab, y'all develop some of those highly engaging and highly relevant, innovative teaching strategies so that you can be in the loop with your your students and you guys will have a successful school year. Here's a tip that you can use. As a former teacher, when I taught business management and marketing on the high school level, I would find shows that were interesting but relevant to the content we were learning. In the course, there was a concept called the four P's that I wanted my students to grasp. Price, product, people, and promotion. Promotion is specifically regarding marketing. So this was the marketing portion. And every single Friday, I would play a show called Shark Tank. And I don't know if you're familiar with the show, but basically there are four celebrity investors that are successful entrepreneurs and they would listen to business pitches from those who are emerging in their business and wanted their business to grow. And we would dissect everything that they talked about. We would talk about what was relevant to the week. We would talk about how they specifically marketed. I would allow them opportunity to express their opinion on what they thought about the entire episode from every perspective. This is an example of how you can incorporate a highly engaging and highly relevant innovative teaching strategy in your classroom. Now I'm going to give you one that you can specifically use. We'll call it Shark Tank. And in the same way those emerging entrepreneurs pitched their idea to the successful investors that they were trying to get to buy into their company, I want you to do the same thing. And you can even call it Shark Tank. I, I want you to give them opportunity to pitch a lesson, so to speak, or to teach a lesson about a topic that is relevant to their world, about something that they are passionate it about as long as it pertains to the overall subject that you're teaching okay you can vet it however you want you can put in whatever system that'll triage what can and can't be done but I'm telling you this is going to be gold because your students will be invested they will have skin in the game and they're gonna want to perform well for you all right last but certainly not least I promise you this may be controversial for some but if you feel some type of way go ahead you know how we do here sound off in the comments let me know how it is your feeling. But before we get into it, I need you to do me a favor. This is a growing channel. So if you are edified by what we are giving you guys today, I need you to do me a favor. We need more subscribers. So go ahead and hit that button below and share this video with one of your teacher friends. All right, let's get into tip number three. All right, y'all, my last and final tip for the day is something really simple, and I promise you, you've heard it before. And you know what? Many of you may not agree, but that's cool. Let me know how you feel in the comments below. You know how we get down here. My last tip for the day is simply this. I want you to incentivize academic and behavioral excellence. I want you to incentivize and reward academic and behavioral excellence. Now, I know this may be controversial for some, especially because of COVID-19. Many of you guys are still in the virtual learning model. Many of you guys aren't in class, and those who are in class are more worried about your health, which you should be, okay? But here's how you can incentivize it. You can do virtual incentives, all right? Now, some of them may require you to make a sacrifice for yourself, but I promise you, if you make the sacrifice for yourself, it is going to pay dividends for you, not just with your students, but in your personal life, okay? When we sow seeds, when we sow seeds and we invest in people, it always comes back to us. So what I'm telling you is this. I'm actually challenging you. I want you to sacrifice $25. I want you to sacrifice $50 whenever you can and go ahead and buy some gift cards for your students and let them know, hey, I'm going to reward you if you do this. And I know some of you are probably thinking, well, aren't they supposed to do that? Why are you rewarding? 
rewarding something that they're supposed to do. Now, listen, I hear you, but it's the same thing for you. I promise you, you would feel some type of way if you sow the seed. In fact, you're doing it right now. You're sowing a seed every day that you get up and go to work and you expect some fruit to be there every two weeks in that direct deposit. So I'm telling you the same way. What you're subconsciously teaching your students, no matter how old or young they are, is that they will get out of a thing what they put into it. So if they put into it something good, if they plant an apple seed, they're going to get apples back. They're not going to get oranges. They're going to get good fruit back, not sour fruit or fruit that is not fully ripe. So I'm telling you this, that this is going to be a way that you can instill a managed classroom for your virtual classroom or your physical classroom. Here's a strategy that you can use to incentivize academic excellence and behavioral excellence. You can implement a drive-by pizza party. Now listen, I know everybody loves pizza. You might have to get some vegan pizza because everybody's like on this vegan wave or whatnot now, but you can incentivize a drive-by pizza party. Now listen, you know we gotta follow the CDC guidelines. Make sure you wear your gloves and your mask and you stay six feet apart when you can, all right? But I'm telling you, this is going to be innovative for your classroom because nobody's ever done it before. All right. So I'm telling you, you can incentivize good behavior. You can incentivize academic excellence. So you definitely need to implement these three tools today. All right, y'all, we got one more week of classroom management. And I hope that you are being built up for this year that you are already enduring. You are made for this. Okay. You are made for this moment. You are made for this time and you are built to last and you're going to make it. All right. Before I go, do me me a favor. Let all of your friends, family, and fellow teachers know that this is the teacher success series of the Caps and Gowns TV show, where we're providing inspiration and motivation in preparation for your next graduation. Go kill it this week. I love you guys. Peace.